Greetings to all in the most blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is indeed a blessing and a honor for me to meditate from the word of the Lord with you today from the book of Philemon. Today we will be meditating from verses 17 to 25 which talks about Paul the burdened partner. The word translated partner is koinonia which means to have in common. It is translated communication in Philemon 6 which means fellowship. Paul volunteered to become a business partner with Philemon and help him solve the problem with Onesimus. He made two suggestions, receive him as myself and put that whatever he stole from you on my account. As Philemon's new partner, Paul could not leave Rome and go to Colossae, but he could send Onesimus to his personal representative. The way you treat Onesimus is the way you treat me, said the Apostle. Philemon 12, we see, He is to me as my own heart. This is to me an illustration of what Jesus Christ has done for us as believers. God's people are so identified with Jesus Christ that God receives them as he receives his son, my beloved friends. We are accepted in the beloved and clothed in his righteousness. And we certainly cannot approach God with any merit of our own, but God must receive us when we come to him in Jesus Christ. The word receive in Philemon 17 means to receive into one's family circle. So imagine a slave entering his master's family, but imagine a guilty sinner entering God's family. That Philemon ignore the slave's crimes and forget about the debt Onesimus owed. Rather, Paul offered to pay the debt himself. Put it on my account, I will repay it. The language in Philemon 19 sounds like a legal promissory note of that time. So this was Paul's assurance to his friend that the debt would be paid. And it takes more than love to solve the problem. Love must pay a price. And God does not save us by his love, for though he loves the whole world, the whole world is not saved. We see in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 that God saves sinners by his grace, and grace is love that pays a price, and God in his holiness could not ignore the debt that we owe. For God must be faithful to his own law. So he paid the debt for us. Theologians call this the doctrine of imputation. To impute means to put it on account. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, my sins were put on his account and he was treated the way I should have been treated. When I trusted him as my savior, his righteousness was put on my account and now God who is Jesus Christ accepts me in him. Jesus said to the father, he no longer owes you a debt because I paid it fully on the cross. So receive him as you would receive me. 
let him come into the family circle however my beloved brothers and sisters in christ we must keep in mind that there's a difference between being accepted in christ and acceptable to christ anyone who trusts jesus christ for salvation is accepted in jesus christ as we see in romans chapter 4 verses 1 to 4 but the believer must try with god's help to be acceptable to the lord in his daily life as we see in romans chapter 12 verses 2 14 chapter verses 18 2 Corinthians chapter 5 was 9 and Hebrews chapter 12 was 28 The father wants to look at those who are in a son and say of them as he said of Jesus I am well pleased Philemon 19 suggests that it was apostle Paul who led Philemon to faith in Christ. Paul used this special relationship to encourage his friend to receive Onesimus. Philemon and Onesimus were not only really spiritual brothers in the Lord, but they had the same spiritual father, Paul. See Philemon 10, 1 Corinthians 4.15 was paul hinting in philemon 21 that philemon should do even more and free onesimus for that matter why did he not come right out and condemn slavery but my dear friends this letter certainly would have been that ideal place to do it and paul did not condemn slavery in this letter or in any of his letters though he often had a word of admonition for slaves and their masters Ephesians chapter 6 verses 5 to 9 and Colossians chapter 3 verses 22 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 1 to 2 and Titus chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 in fact he encouraged christian slaves to obtain their freedom if they could as we see in first corinthians chapter 7 verses 21 to 24 so my dear friends during the american civil war both side use the same bible to prove their cases for or against slavery so one of the popular arguments was if slavery is so wrong why did jesus christ and the apostles say nothing against us but paul gave instructions to regulate slavery but he did not condemn it and one of the best explanations was given by alexander in his commentary on colossians in the expositors bible which says first the message of christianity is primarily to the individuals and only secondary to the society it leaves the unites whom it has influenced to influence the mass second it acts on spiritual and moral sentiment and only afterwards and consequently on deeds or institutions third it hates violence and trust wholly to enlightened conscience so it directly middles with no political or social arrangements but lays down the principles which will profoundly affect these and leaves them to soak into the general mind 
Had the early Christians begun an open crusade after or against slavery and they would have been crushed by the opposition and the message of the gospel which would become confused with a social and political program. Think of how difficult it was for people to overcome slavery in England and America and those two nations had general education and the Christian religion to help prepare the way. Think also of the struggles in the modern civil rights movement even within the church and if the battle for freedom was difficult for us to win in the 19th and 20th centuries what would the struggle have been like back in the first century and Christians are the salt of the earth and the light of the world as we see in Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16 and their spiritual influence must be felt in society to the glory of God and God used Joseph in Egypt Esther and Nehemiah in Persia and Daniel in Babylon and throughout church history when we see the Bible and there have been believers in political officers who have faithfully served the Lord but Christians in the Roman Empire could not work through local demonstratic political structure as we can today so they really had no political power to bring about change the change had to come from within even though it took centuries for slavery to end so Apostle Paul closed the letter with his usual personal request and greetings he fully expected to be released and to visit Philemon and Apia in Colossae. You in Philemon 22 is plural. Even this fact would encourage Philemon to follow Paul's instructions for he certainly would not want to be ashamed when he met the Apostle face to face. As we have seen Ephesus was probably the pastor of the church and he had gone to Rome to assist Paul whether he was a voluntary pastor prisoner for Paul's sake or whether he had actually been arrested by the Romans we do not know we must commend him for his dedication to Christ and to Paul and John Mark was with Paul Colossians chapter 4 verses 10 the young man who failed Paul on his first missionary journey as we see in Acts chapter 12 verses 12 25 and chapter 15 verses 36 to 41 and Paul had forgiven Mark and was grateful to his faithful ministry See 2 Timothy 4 verses 11. Aristarchus was from Thessalonica and accompanied Paul to Jerusalem and then to Rome. Acts chapter 19, 29 verse and 27 chapter verses 2 we see. Demas is mentioned three times in Paul's letters. Demas my fellow worker in Philemon 24 Demas Colossians 4 verses 14 we see and Demas had forsaken me having loved this present world 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 10 so John Mark failed but was restored and Demas seemed to be doing well but then he fell and Luke of course was the beloved physician 
as we see in Colossians 4 verses 14 who accompanied Paul ministered to him and eventually wrote the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Paul's benediction in this Philemon was his official signature for his letters. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 17 to 18 And it magnified the grace of God and after all it was the grace of Jesus Christ that made our salvation possible. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10 Let me end my message by saying it was he who said charge that to my account receive them as you would receive me may this message help us to receive Jesus Christ as a personal Savior today may God bless you and in the next class we would learn from the next book of the Bible Till then, God bless you. Thank you.